Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects. So today we'll be showing you how to grow hair over time. So without further ado, let's just grab a sphere, change the amount of segments, and then let's just jump up to simulate hair and add hair. So if we just hit the render button now, so we've got this, and um, what we want to do is we just want to play with the hair settings a little bit to get a, a better look than that. So we will just create a HDR sky. And then let's jump into our hair material. So we'll just stick with um, brown hair for now, but we'll go to specular and knock this way down. Sometimes it just looks weird. Um, and then let's just see what that looks like. Right, so what we want to do now is we just want to add a little bit of dyn um, a little bit more realism to this hair um, without doing any brushing or dynamics yet so if we just go to frizz we can see a little bit of shape happening and we can change the variation to something like 24 percent so it's just a little bit more varied the amount can be changed just to show you what's actually happening if we change it to something more severe it looks more like fur than hair so that's kind of good for like a bear or a teddy bear or something but like let's go for 10 just to add that little bit of movement and then the other good one for a little subtlety is kink so if we just put a bit of that in and then again really make it subtle and there we go we've got something that looks pretty cool right so some more hair tricks so what we want to do is we want to start brushing the hair um, but to do that we need to say that the ball, if we start brushing the hair, we don't want the hair to go into the ball. We want it to just sit on top of it just like it would if you was brushing your hair on your head. So what we need to do for that is we need to just click on our sphere and click on our hair tags and then we want to click hair collider. So now if we start using the brush on this hair, it shouldn't go through the sphere. So let's go to simulate and we want to go to hair tools. If we just put this it will pop up and we can just use this for now. So if we use the brush, we can change the settings down here but let's just keep it as it is for now because we just want it quite big. And we can start just brushing the hair. It's quite hard to get used to but eventually after playing with it a few times because it's not used that much by a lot of Cinema 4D artists but it's actually quite a powerful tool. So now if we render that, we've got something that looks like that brushed. The other thing that you can use is the cut, which is quite useful. So you can just cut certain hairs just by skimming over like this. So one of my favourite tips is actually quite a really cool one because a lot of people try and brush hair using the points which I've just showed you. Um, but when you brush hair in real life you don't brush just the tips and then it pulls everywhere else. So what you do is if you go to simulate hair mode and you go to guides, now you'll be brushing hair like you would as if it was on your head. So it's a lot more realistic. So you can brush in the middle of the hairs and really control the shape of the hair more. Whereas if you use just the um, points at the end, it, it, it's gonna be a lot harder to one control and two to make it look quite realistic. Um, also, you can use this mode, which can create, if you use a kink, you can be doing what the material would be doing but add in extra kinks when you brush. 
So if we just go and just knock it the other way so you can see what's happening. So once you've got a perfectly brushed hair, you could go over with the kink and then just add a bit more shape and variation. It's quite slow. And it just changes things a little bit. <coughs> Something else that you might find useful, if you've, I don't know if you've ever used hair, but if you have, you'll notice how slow it is in the viewport. So just like a lot of other effects, what you can do is you can actually do a dynamics cache. So if you calculate it, it'll work out all the frames and save it to a cache file, which then means that you can watch the animation of the hair in real time. So now if we watch this, it gives you a lot better playback speeds and if you set this guides back to and if you set the guides back to guidelines you see it's a lot faster again something else that you might find useful is we want our very first frame to be hair that's resting so we're we here and we think, okay, that's where we want it to be. And then we want to start doing the brushing and stuff at this point. So what we do is we just go to the hair or you could wait for it to fully rest. But for this example, let's just wait. So we like 86 where it is. Just go to simulation under hair edit, go to set initial state. On older versions than R23, it might say set as dynamics, but it's exactly the same thing. So now, if we go to the beginning of our timeline, it starts here. So that's another useful little trick. And then this is a good time to like start brushing and doing whatever you want to the hair. Whenever you start brushing, it'll go back to the frame that's at the beginning, just in case now we want to move. The last trick that I will explain is if you can't be bothered to cut some of these hairs shorter or going in and individually changing the length of some of these hairs like proper zooming in and just going in what you can do is you can also do this in the material editor as well so if you go to scale and you increase the variation to about 80 You'll have some longer and short hairs and some short and longer hairs. So now it doesn't look like that pattern as much. So you can do this with the length of the hair as well, just by activating the length. And then again, say we want 80% variation. Some hairs will be longer, some will be shorter. So that you get that cool, more varied organic look rather than it just looking like you've plonked a hair object onto something. So hopefully you found the hair tutorial kind of fun and hopefully you create some wicked things with it. Um, definitely drop them in the comments if you, if you want to share your videos. Well, yeah, catch you on the next one.